It is high time some K-pop idols understood that their fans are not their friends, that they can vent to about every little thing they're feeling. No, it's not their fault when their words are taken out of context, but it is their responsibility to understand who their audience is, and especially the fact that what they say and how many times they say it has consequences. If you're going to complain about lack of basic etiquette, you should be able to show it yourself. It is not just greeting and meeting people that needs basic respect. It is how you use your platform. And at a certain level of stardom, you should be able to understand the basic etiquette of keeping your mouth closed. I think it's time we address this problem with Chan, especially when it comes to his relationship with Stay. To do so, I'm going to have to explain what happened and we would have to go back to 2022. So I'm pretty sure you guys remember the hate train against Ive for their quote unquote lack of respect, especially their center, Chang Wanyang. A lot of people had been complaining that she's not bowing or she's not bowing enough. And it was mainly from clips that had been heavily edited by people who do not like her or Ive as a group. Chan was on a live with some of his fans and they asked him what his experience at KCON was. Now it is important to note that Ive was not there at KCON, so I doubt that this was addressed to them. Chan talked about how he enjoyed some of the performances and then he went on to talk about Lightsum, Cube's fourth generation girl group, and said that he really enjoyed their then recent comeback alive. But he also said that meeting them backstage was really nice because they were good at greeting. Chan seemed a little hesitant to talk about it because he didn't want to sound like a boomer, but honestly I don't think it is boomer energy to just ask for basic respect. He said that while he understood that bowing is like the most important thing when it comes to greeting etiquette, for him, he was more interested in the tone of greeting. So for instance, there's a difference between someone saying, oh, hi, or oh, hello, nice to meet you. And I think he had a problem with the way some people were greeting. It seemed as if they were just doing it because they are expected to and to get it over with, it didn't feel like they had any enthusiasm in meeting him. Unfortunately, because of this, some of Chan's fans actually took this and ran with it and started hating on Ive. If you look at a lot of videos, especially shorts, talking about Ive being quote unquote disrespectful, you can see a bunch of comments saying, oh my goodness, Chan was right. This is exactly what Chan was talking about. Oh my gosh, Chan is always right about everything, etc., etc." It was really getting out of control. Now, of course, this behavior was in no way Chan's fault for three reasons. Number one, Chan was talking about his experience at KCON. Ive wasn't there. Two, Chan didn't mention any names. Again, so assuming that he was talking about Ive would be unfair. But three, Chan didn't have a problem with bowing. You see, Ive's controversy was the fact that they were allegedly not bowing to their seniors or that they were not bowing to other artists. And Chan didn't seem to have a problem with bowing. He was more interested in the tone of the greeting. So because that was where his focus was, I didn't understand why on earth this was being used to attack Ive. But a few days ago, Chan seemed to address this thing again. And at this point, he's actually starting to sound like a broken record because in the exact same order that he spoke about his experience at KCON, he said it again about Music Bank Paris. One of his fans asked him and said, how was Music Bank Paris? And again, he talked about sharing the stage with plenty of amazing artists that he got to meet. But then again, he started talking about how he didn't want to sound like a boomer, but you know what, respect and greeting, etc. His problem this time around was the fact that people were not greeting him back. So like if he says hello, the people would just ignore him. And he was like, you'd be like, what? Which obviously it makes sense. If you greet someone you uh, and they don't respond, you're kind of taken aback by their behavior especially for someone like me who grew up in an environment where like greeting is everything. If you are part of almost any African culture, you know that you have to greet everybody. The person who delivers the butcher meat is supposed to be your uncle. The lady who sells the vegetables is your aunt. Everyone you're supposed to greet. And seniority culture is intense. Speaking of seniority culture, I also wanted to address the climate in South Korea right now in terms of seniority culture. In most cultures, you are expected to respect adults, people who are especially Especially older than you and especially like the elderly. I know in a lot of African cultures it's like this and I see in a lot of other people's cultures it is that way as well. You are supposed to respect the elderly. You know, even if they are random people you've never met, you're expected to like greet them, etc. But seniority culture in South Korea is amped up 
times a million. Like someone who's a few months older than you, you have to address them with a different term. Like you're Anni, you're Oppa, you're Hyung. You have to talk to them differently, obviously. And unfortunately, because of this, that culture is often abused. And that's why the climate right now in South Korea actually involves people fighting against seniority culture because it is becoming abusive. When I was reading and studying more about um, bullying in middle school in South Korea, I noticed that a lot of bullies really amp up their bullying tactics because they want to impress the seniors at their school. I mean, it's so bad that someone being like a few months older than you, like they were born in November of 95 and you're born in January of 96, you have to give them a certain level of respect just because they were born before you were, as if it was like some kind of race that you actually ran and lost. Some South Koreans are actually fighting against that type of culture. Now, I'm going to start off with the fact that Chan did apologize because when this thing got out of control and I started getting a lot of hate, especially under their Instagram comments, Chan ended up coming out and saying that he was sorry, he was not speaking about this particular artist, etc. And a lot of people were really upset saying, why did Chan have to apologize? So let me explain it to you. The reason why he was complaining in the first place is the reason why he should apologize basic etiquette and respect. Meeting people, um, having dinner with friends, family, um, at restaurants or at other people's houses is not the only spaces you need etiquette. Another thing you need etiquette with is the platform that you are using. And Chan is not tactful with his platform. Chan treats stays like they are his friends when they are not. In fact, over the years, I have noticed that Chan has developed a really toxic relationship with his fans. Not only does he egg on their bad behavior, even though he tells them several times, don't, you know, behave badly. I am always watching, etc. His actions say otherwise because he's constantly feeding into their delusions. These people act like Chan is their therapist. Sometimes they act like he's their God or their best friend and they tell all their personal details. And I feel like some things that Chan should be complaining about, say maybe to his friends or his bandmates, he's taking that and complaining to his fans and that is a no-no. A lot of people are constantly saying how they want idols to be treated like humans and they should have freedom of speech. But my question is, is K-pop ready for that? The answer is no, it is not. Because every time an idol says something, if you disagree with it, you're going to go and bully them. You're going to go bully their groups. You're going to go bully their fans. If it's something you agree with, you're going to use it to bully other people and bully other groups and bully their fans. It's so out of control that I do not think we're ready for idols to be free human beings yet or to have a freedom of speech. Because unfortunately, freedom of speech does not come with freedom of consequence. Sometimes the consequence of having a platform Form is that your words are going to be taken out of context. And while that is not your fault, you have a responsibility to be tactful and to understand who you're talking to. Stays are not your friends, Chan. You can talk to them about every little thing. And you especially cannot keep ranting about the same thing more than once. You said it once, we heard it then. And that is enough. I'm also going to address why people keep complaining and say, why is Chan the only one getting dragged for this? He's not the only person who's talked about it. We young of 80s, I believe, talked about it at one point. Hyo, if I'm not mistaken, has addressed this. The difference is that these people's fans are not taking what they're saying and going to bully other people. That is where the difference is. And before you give me the excuse that these are not stays because they don't have any members of Stray Kids on their profile pictures, honestly, shut up. Eugen is my profile picture right now. That doesn't make me any less of a Monster X, Red Velvet, or MCND stan. I don't understand for the life of me why people think it is okay to take what idols say out of context and go and bully other people. It is childish behavior and it is wrong. You can use it as an example when you talk about serious situations. There's nothing wrong with that. But what you're not inclined to do is take it and use it to bully other people, especially if names have not been mentioned. Chan already made it very clear that he was not going to mention any names. So for you to take it out of context and go bully other people, it's not fair. And so that is the responsibility of the fans and that is 100% on them. And they should be the ones apologizing to Ive as well because they're the ones going out of their way to comment really mean and disgusting things in Ive's comment sections. 
The problem with Chan, personally, I think for me, and the reason why I cannot defend him in this case is because this has happened before several times. I still remember this was like, I think 2020 or something. I don't remember when Three Watcha released Player, but people started saying that the lyrics were about Wu Jin and they started like, you know, attacking Wu Jin. And it got so bad that Chan had to address it. He was like, people are saying that the song is about the, a particular person and no, it's not. And he had to clear the air on that. Not to mention the fact that he had a live in March of that year that was now used against Wu Jin when these false allegations were being thrown at him. It was out of control. Chan has seen time and time again, he says something, his fans take it out of context and go and harass people. Not too long ago, literally last year, he was talking about how Stray Kids is eight and he was going off that I think he Googled Stray Kids or something and there were still pictures of them with Wu Jin. And he's like, oh my God, Stray Kids is eight, move on or whatever. And before you know it, Wu Jin was getting dragged on Twitter nonstop. No one said anything, no one brought him up. Chan just stated a matter of fact and it was taken out of context and they made a lot of noise and for someone who claims that he is always watching he should know that this behavior has consequences now of course that doesn't mean he's on social media 24 7 he has a job and he has a life but if things get explosive and chan has made it pretty clear that he's aware that things like this happen then shouldn't he be more responsible I feel like he's just not even trying to put in a little bit of effort because basic etiquette also involves knowing when to speak and when not to speak. And for Chan to be crying and complaining about respect when he's not able to give it himself while using his platform is hypocritical. I'm going to say it. Chan is being a hypocrite and I'm sorry if you do not like it, but it is the truth. Just because I like the man doesn't mean that I have to lie. And what he did was wrong point blank period. I think it is time that we address this bowing controversy with Ive because I've talked about this before, but people don't seem to listen. Every clip you can find of Wan Young allegedly not bowing, I can find you a full clip proving that she did bow. I mean, the first one that really went viral, I believe, is when she was interviewing NCT 127 at Music Bank. She literally bowed four times. And I remember like I put a clip of this as proof on a video when I was talking about the villainization of Wan Young that she did bow. But people cut that off and they were like, oh my goodness, she didn't bow, etc. The other issue that I had was the video that exploded when they were at Melon because they bowed at Monster X, but they didn't at TXT and everybody made a big deal out of it. What people didn't show was what happened after they had gotten the award and gotten off stage. They came back and when TXT congratulated them, they bowed to TXT again all six of them. But this information is never put out because people are trying their hardest to make Ive look bad because that's what happens when you become popular. I mean, see what's happening with 50-50 right now. When you reach certain levels of stardom, everyone wants a piece of you and they want to get that piece by ripping you apart to shreds. And if that means using what another idol has said, even though they are not talking about you, they will use it with absolutely zero remorse. The conversation that Wan Young is not bowing enough came after people started proving that Wan Young was bowing. And a lot of these people who were talking about bowing enough honestly don't understand anything about Korean etiquette. I feel like if you are going to criticize someone them doing something wrong that is not in your culture, the least you can do is study how that culture works. There's different degrees in, of bowing in South Korea, okay? And not every degree is supposed to be 90 degrees when it comes to bowing. When you're simply doing a thank you or excuse me, which is what usually Won Young does when she is interviewing these artists, a 15 degree bow is fine. So Won Young is actually bowing enough. A lot of these people who don't bother to do any bit of research about bowing etiquette or greeting etiquette in South Korea are the ones who want to have so much crap to say. I don't understand this. Chan talking about this generation being different. I don't know what this man is talking about, okay? He is literally in the same generation as Eugen and Wan Yang. Stray Kids debuted in 2017. Eyes One debuted in 2018. So I don't know if he's talking about musical generations. I don't know what he's talking about because that is if he's addressing Ive, by the way, just making that clear because we do not know whether he was talking about Ive or not. He said that he wasn't. I want to believe him, but I know better than to do so. So I don't understand what generation he's talking about because most of the idols that he's probably interacting with are idols of the same generation as him. And when it comes to age, honestly, I don't know if the age gap is that huge. Chan turns 26 this year, if I'm not mistaken. 
So maybe he's talking about in terms of age, but there isn't that big of a generation gap. And honestly, he's making it sound like he lived like back in the day when things were so different. Dude, you debuted a few years ago. It's not that big of a deal. And he's allowed to have a problem with it. I'm not saying that he isn't, but I think the audience he's choosing to share it with is not a good audience to do so because his fans are irresponsible. His fans are a bunch of bullies and I don't care if they don't want to hear it. They are going to hear it. They are a bunch of bullies and you're not going to walk over to people who are irresponsible and childish and spew out you know, what you are feeling about respect and etiquette, etc. Because some of these people think that you are a god. They worship him as a person. Therefore, they think everyone else is supposed to do the same. And when they don't, they want to punish those people for it because they expect the world to see him from their lenses. Even now, they don't even expect people to criticize him at all. They're like, you can't criticize him. He's right. There are some people who treat Chan as if he could never make a mistake, as if he could never be wrong about something. And that is extremely dangerous. So in my personal opinion, Chan was wrong. End of discussion. Okay. His feelings are his feelings. There's nothing wrong with that. The audience he's speaking to and the way he addressed it was a no, no. And I do not feel sorry for him that he had to apologize. He had to, because another group ended up getting hate because he would not shut up about this. I think that basic etiquette just doesn't end at greeting. It also extends to how you address people, who you're speaking to, when to speak, and what to talk about. And if Chan hasn't mastered that, I think he of all people should not be complaining about etiquette.